Well, all I represent is my confidence. I am the greatest. I cannot lose. I'm pretty. And every man believes he's the greatest. Every man will like to be the greatest. Many want to say this, but they fear it. And they see this in myself, and some hate me for it, and some love me. So. Do you have a bodyguard? No. You don't? I have one bodyguard. He has no eyes, though he sees. He has no ears, though he hears. He remembers everything with the aid of mind and memory. When he wishes to create a thing, he just orders it to be and it comes into existence. That's God. Oh, he's my bodyguard. He's your bodyguard. He's the supreme. What would you like people to think about you when you've gone? I'd like for them to say he took a few cups of love. He took one tablespoon of patience, one teaspoon of generosity, one pint of kindness, he took one quart of laughter, one pinch of concern, and then he mixed willingness with happiness. He added lots of faith and he stirred it up well. Then he spread it over a span of a lifetime and he served it to each and every deserving person he met. I studied life, I studied people, and I'm educated on this. But when it comes to reading and writing, I'm not, I may be illiterate in that. But when it comes to common sense, when it comes to feelings, when it comes to love, compassion, heart for people, then I, I'm rich. Yeah. I wrote something once that says, where is man's wealth? His wealth is in his knowledge. For if his wealth was in the bank and not in his knowledge, then he don't possess it because it's in the bank. You know what I'm saying? My wealth is in my knowledge. I'm a spokesman for my people, and I'm going to represent my people, and I don't want to be a bad representative. I can't be blind, because the blind lead the blind, they all fall in the ditch. You know, I want to say something right here. You all might, this might make you all think. Life is not really long. Let's say the average person, 30 years old. If you're 30 years old, you are not but about seven years old. How can I prove it? Add up all the seven, eight, nine hours you slept for 30 years. Out of 30 years, out of all the nights, last night when you went to bed and woke up this morning, you don't remember a thing. You've been unconscious for about eight years. If you're 30 years old, you slept about eight years. Okay, how much traveling have you done in 30 years? From the television station to home, to another country, to another city, to school, to church. You've probably traveled two years your life or spent just getting back and forth to where you're going. So there's eight years of sleeping, two years of traveling, that's 30 years out of your life before you accomplish anything. How long do you sit in school? In America, we stay in school from the first grade to 12th grade. Six hours a day for 12 years, break it down, you sit in a classroom for three years without leaving. Okay, two years of traveling, eight years of sleeping, three years of school. How many movies have you went to? How many wrestling matches? How much entertainment? How many movie theaters, live plays, baseball games? probably two years of entertainment. So by the time a man, you older people know him, bear with us, I'm saying, by the time you have children, by the time you have uh, made a way for your children, by the time you've paid for your home, you're pushing 60 years old. So life is real short. See, Ali, this is the only thing about Ali. When you were watching Ali get beaten up as an old man, even though he was a young kid, he's not gonna quit, you gotta kill him. He won't quit. Even he was getting beat up every round, getting kicked out of my lab at home. It's a champ, no, come on, let me out, come on out. They wouldn't stop, he had to be, he would have to stay up there and just take the beating like a man, he just, he wouldn't quit. In a way, I respect a guy like that so much, I have so much admiration for a guy like that so much, but it's just not right to do you that way as a human being. This say it's over, I'll come back and fight another day else, you got me, you know? And listen, um, I always like to think I'm a bad, but I don't give a, f but I'm, um, that's a part of Ali, that's, that's where he overshines me because I can't understand a man that's willing to just really die for this. You know, and I talked to but he, he's the real dick. Why does it make you emotional? Is it talking about him or the relation to you? Uh, um, me, me, um, Ali's a giant. There's no way that other fighters can match him. He'll die for this shit, he'll die. I'm not gonna die for that. Everybody has a purpose in life. Everybody has a destiny, and the knowledge of that destiny enables one to fulfill it. See, so everything was put here for purpose. Ants, buzzards, trees, and it's the knowing of that purpose that enables every man to fulfill it. And uh, 
And life begins when a person realizes his purpose in life. Very few people uh, know how to go about finding what's the best purpose in their life that they should try to fulfill. And mine was just to be the world heavyweight champion. And then also not only being the champion, but keeping my dignity, my pride, my manhood, not Uncle Tom, as, as they say, selling out my people just for the white man's dollar. So this is my purpose, to go down as the one, the first one just about to go all out and all the way and being clean with the sport and, and not representing nothing like tobacco and whiskey and various commercials and stand with my people and representing everybody at the same time, not disowning my own, marrying my own kind and, and socializing with my own kind. But I belong to the world as far as being the champion, but I let it be known that I am black and I will always be black and with black, even if I mean give up all the money and everything that I can be offered from boxing. My head got big and I started thinking it was my training camp and my boxing ability that kept me where I was at and God punished me and he gave me a good whooping. He broke my jaw in the second fight and he got me whooped and knocked down in the Frazier fight and I realized I wasn't that great after all. So I had to get not only together physically, but spiritually. For this fight, I prayed every day for five days five times a day for the past uh, uh, four months. And everything is perfect. And if Allah's with me, it ain't no way no man can win. No way. Because I'm representing God. I'm representing the freedom of black people in America. I want to be the one black man who stands up and look at white people and tell the truth, who don't sell them out, who don't uncle dumb, who don't promote cigarettes, don't promote whiskey, take his fame to uplift his little brother in the ghetto, how do we treat each other? How do we help each other? So, I'm gonna dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, to helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help us make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I wanna see it. Because we live how long? 80 years? The odds are everybody in this room, some of you gonna be dead 20 years from now, some of you are going to be dead 50 years from now. Some are going to be dead 30. And some are going to be dead 60, 70 years from now. We all going to die soon. And if you live to be, say, 125 years old, which we don't do, right? Let's say we live to be 250. And you can have sex for 145 of those years. You're going to come to end after that. So we don't have but about 80 years on Earth. This is a test to see where will we spend our life in heaven and hell. This is not the life now. Your real self is inside you. Your body gets old. Some of you go to look at the fridge, look old, you don't have no teeth. Your hair is leaving you. Your bodies get tired. But your soul and your spirit never die. That's gonna live forever. So your body is just housing your soul and spirit. So God is testing us on how we treat each other, how we live to see where our real home be in heaven. So this physical stuff don't last for so long. So my car, this building is going to be here when the man who built it dead. There have been many kings and queens of England, they're all dead. After this one is gone, another one will come. So we don't stay here, we're just trustees, we don't own nothing. So what am I saying? The most important thing about life is what's going to happen when you die 